I'm a new <laughs> I feel like there should have been a bill passed to protect me for two years so I can get my foot. It's not that we can't have anything. It's that the black people that really be for black people that really care about the state of black people in community, we think they're annoying. We make them into jokes. We, we embrace anti-intellectualism. We want them to shut the f up. Do it. And what people don't understand, you still got to pay bills. Like just because you believe and you want to work for a better society doesn't mean you don't have rent. You know where you don't see any cops in white neighborhoods. What strikes me about just the whole defunding the police abolition conversation is just the lack of imagination. The reality of it is, is that it's a lot more conservatively minded than I think that we're willing to acknowledge. Like just because you vote Democrat, it don't make you progressive. tell you why I've convened you all here today. So I put up a video on Instagram explaining why Governor Kathy Ockel should support uh, making prison calls from prison free, right? And that this is a massive amount of debt that is, you know, disproportionately placed on Black and Hispanic families paying for these prison calls. I got a comment from this Black guy uh, who leaves me hate comments every day, actually. But this comment, he said, he said, you are so out of touch from what the Black community wants. Black people do not want this. They do not want it easier for people in jail. You are basically a liberal white woman. So I oh, said, this is powerful. Good. This is powerful. And, and I'm like, I'm pretty confident. I'm not a liberal white woman or divorced from Black people. But I said, you know what? I am saying, I am seeing a lot of Black people that are pro-policing like pro over policing and pro mass incarceration and spewing a line like very supportive of these tough on crime black cop mayors and stuff across the country i'm getting i'm seeing a lot of them not to say they're the majority or anything but obviously there is something there um and so i wanted to put that to the room we had a touch? i think that black people are just as susceptible to copaganda as everybody else and i think that it's so pervasive now. And I have to say, um, you know, my my wheelhouse is abortion and repro rights. So I did a I did some research on defunding the police. And I think I was even surprised at how few crimes actually get solved. And so I think there are a lot of people who sort of have this mindset that the police are supposed to keep you safe. You know, and what if there's a murder or there's a rape or they always go to those really extreme circumstances and. I mean, if that happens, it happens. The cops aren't going to fix it. They aren't going to solve it. And I think a lot of people in my in my mind, I was very surprised at how few cases are actually cleared. I thought they'd get at least a couple, but they really don't. And so it kind of raises the question, what do they do? I mean, I think I think black people are obviously susceptible to copaganda like we are in the society. We receive the same messages like we're not immune to kind of like hegemony and how. Um, how we're all constantly being programmed. But I will say that what feels different is like we have the real wor world experiences to know that the cops aren't going to do anything and also know that like th they are more likely to be a threat to us. Like in my own kind of politicization, it took me a second to like rec reconcile the fact that I wasn't pro like abolishing the police prior to say like six, seven years ago, but I was also actively afraid of the police myself. Um, and like could kind of get down with the idea that like, oh, of course you need to call someone in a murder, but then also would be like shaking uncontrollably if I got pulled over or was would never really feel like I would get the benefit of the doubt with police. So I do think that like, especially black people in New York, especially black New Yorkers, especially if you grew up in New York as a black kid, like you have probably been harassed by the police in the subway, on the block, in school, and somewhere in your kind of life or world. So I do think that that makes black people be at a higher standard of, of recognizing that the police don't do anything, even if you don't have the ability to kind of do the research and look at the clearance rates and stuff. But I do think the problem is like we don't have alternatives. So people are kind of like, I know this is a shit 
option. I know it's not going to help me, but I don't have anything else. And it scares me to kind of be in free fall or have nothing, which is why I think sometimes people who feel scared or uncertain about the future, like cling to this idea, this like fairy tale of what the police are, even when they know damn well, like that's not how it works in practice. And I get that, right? Like I get, and I, I especially get when it comes to black people and propaganda and how black people could support policing and whatnot, because everybody is being raised in a world that says that police are synonymous with public safety and yada, yada, yada. So I understand that. What I understand less is like the active, like I get a lot of black people like actively like make life harder for other black people. Like they literally will be angry at you for proposing something. You're like, hey, a lot of lots of black families are in debt and they're like, fuck that. Fuck that. No, no, we don't want that. Like I write a piece that's like, hey, all of these black mayors you like so much are like specifically locking up black people, like ex- like especially so, like a lot more than even the white person before them were locking up. And they're like, right. shut the fuck up, black excellence. Yeah, well it's because they're well, most- <laughs> well it's because most of those pundits or most of those political uh chess pieces are, are people who have to overcompensate. Like, I think we got to understand that. Like, they overcompensate for um, the political participation that's necessary for them to get in office and to stay in office, right? So we all have the experience of the Black cop or the Latino cop that goes, or the Asian cop even, that goes harder on the community than, than even his white counterpart, right? So we understand that even on an anecdotal micro level, you know, that that reflects itself in the political uh, sphere as well. Um, but to get back to the actual question about are you out of touch? Are we out of touch? Um, no. <laughs> I think the simple answer is is no. Um, I And I do want to make the distinction between clearance rate of what we call a solve of a crime and solutions of a crime and what a convictions are. Because, right, the feds are like 97% at the line or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. I know because as a person who has had a past life of criminality and been associated with a community that's been criminalized since I was very young. And, and convicted of crimes that I did not commit and, quite frankly, past crimes that may have been committed that no one ever figured out, right? Um, I'm quite aware that the, the uh, I guess, the solvency of justice or the, the uh, axiom of justice is not, is not like a pure thing. Like, that's just not the reality. But people, people need something to grab onto. It's like hope or the Bible or whatever. Like, they need something to, to grab onto. So I actually empathize a lot with those with those people because i know it just sounds like fear which is what works we know the politicization of fear you did such a good job um bullying the mayor uh, about <laughs> about such tactics so so to me i'm actually not confused about it i think that those people need to be treated like patients right mm. uh, i think they need to be treated with delicate care because they're clearly fragile and i don't mean that in a disrespectful way i mean quite literally like rena said you know we had to rectify our own relationship with what we believe is protection for people of color in this country and the organization that is chartered to do so, but clearly has not made us feel on an individual level that it has, that it has been done to its highest ability. So we can't be crazy if all of us are having this shared experience of like, when I call the police, I don't know what's going to happen, right? The question of, I'm not sure of if things will get solved, as Amani said, or if I will be considered a, a, a suspect in a crime that was committed upon me upon arrival, just simply because of the way that innate bias is endemic in the system. So I'm not confused as to why I do we do that. Um, he clearly is a part of the agenda. He's clearly been appropriated and I feel bad for bro. But I think it's it's not our job to educate him, but it is, I think we have to be, if, if the goal is to combat that level of um, marketing, right? He's an agent of their marketing. There is, there. we do have to be aware of how prevalent it is amongst us and why it exists. And instead of fighting against the idea that like, you know, my personal belief is I don't, I personally, you know, I'm a little nigga. I don't want, I want to be able to be like, nigga, fuck the police, get them off the streets. You know, that's kind of like my want, but I also feel like it's probably not, you know, a reality for human beings who are stuck in a fearful system that they propagated. In. And so I, I just kind of feel like they have to be won over in another way. I don't know what that way is. Cause you know, I ain't here to prophesy. That ain't my job. You know, I get angry and shit. So I just <laughs> ignore them. But you people who have the great job of articulation and, and convincing people of things, um, you know, people go to church to get healed. You're not preaching to people who already know the word. So I think you guys have to have the unfortunate duty of figuring out how to access that fear, calm that fear, meet it with rational and reasonability and, and, and give them these, these facts and these, and these, um, these alternatives 
<laughs> it might be better. I think that's unfortunately a task that y'all are, are kind of propositioned with. Sorry, y'all. You fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're giving, we're doing a lot of good faith interpretations of why people act like this, and I think that's good. Like, we should we should be acting in good faith. But like, there's also like the real annoying thread in Black culture of like respectability and like this feeling that like if you cape for the system, you're going to be spared somehow, or you're mm-hmm. going to get some opportunities, or your family's going to be treated better. And it's like, girl. Nobody, when the cops roll up on you, they're not like looking up your ass and being like, you're a good one. (laughs) We're not going to beat your ass. Like, it's not, it's not rational. It doesn't actually work. It doesn't actually help. So I do think we need to have love and good faith and um, trying to like meet people where they are. But there's also a feeling of like a lot of people's survival mechanism is like, I'm going to distinguish myself from other Black people. So all the anti-Blackness goes to you and I get to like, be one of the few people that gets to like wriggle through and get this privilege. And first of all, it doesn't work that way. But second of all, it's a whack theory of change. It's a theory of change that like sacrifices everybody and not only sacrifices people, but actively tries to undercut folks who are advocating for a better world for all of us based on some idea that like, if you are the respectable one, if you're the good one, if you're the house Negro or whatever, then you'll get the first round of scraps um, and not the second or third round of scraps. Yeah, but their pages always look weird, so I don't even worry about them. Well, I think... <laughs> their pages think always got, yeah. like, black and blue police flags and shit. Well, that's the other thing. You have to make sure it's actually a black person and not, yeah, like, no, some no, weird... And all these black people can see me in my American comments. Flag like, emoji. Yeah, they be doing a lot. They're always, like, oddly placed amongst a group of whites. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, Open no, I, I think... And shit. I think that we we, we, we kind of just, it really boils down to like the big picture of like classism in the black community, I think to a certain extent. And how, well, look, we live in America and in America, if you have money, you are better than other people, right? I mean, Donald Trump's whole appeal is that he's rich. And because he's rich, regardless of how he got rich, and people don't even care, that means that he's better than other people. That means that his opinion matters more. That means he's smarter. That means he's more capable. But the most important thing to this conversation is that he deserves what he gets. And if you don't have that, if you if you're not successful, if you're struggling economically, if you're if you're doing poorly, then you deserve what you get. Because yeah. the fact that you don't have money is a personal fault. And and that's the American value system. And unfortunately, like our community is not immune from that. And 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 I, and I do think that we resist that and, to a certain extent. But, but the reality is that you know we're just not going to be able to to always counteract those messages that you see in terms of saying like, okay, like why you think this person is not deserving because of their economic status? And what what I've noticed is personally is that white people may do it because of racism and black people may do it because of classism. Yeah. And so yeah, as you said, the black the black person is 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 saying, oh well, yeah, you deserve what you're getting because you're poor. And the white person says you deserve what you're getting because you're black. But the reality is that they both agree <laughs> that this person <laughs> deserves what they're getting, right? They may not agree why, <laughs> but they and so the person agrees, well, it doesn't it's because they disagree with each other, they think it's a conflict. But if you're the person at the end of it, you're going to be screwed no matter who's in charge because neither one of these people is acknowledging your basic humanity. And so when it comes to like that person who's articulating that call, it's kind of like he he's questioning why why should we do anything for these people? Because because again, people like that are articulating as these people, as the others, mm-hmm. as the you know the undesirables, the people that you know are bad, inherently wrong and evil, and things like that. And is that and that's the hardest arguments I think to fight because it's not like it's not really a rational argument. It's just basically saying that people are bad and irredeemable and we have no other choice but to put them in a cage and to lock them away because what else are you going to do? Right? Because it's the presumption that the system works, right? Yeah, it's it the works. Yeah. The system, the moral high ground of all, of all, right? Yeah. And, if, uh, you, if you didn't do it, you wouldn't be there. You right? would be oh, there. Yeah, right? right? So right. Right? Which yeah, is it's, it's, I, I know it's crazy, right? But but pe- that's what people think. Yeah. yeah, I get that in my. I I literally get that in my comments all the time. I somebody being like, this one I realized we were really we were really cooked. 
I posted a video of a mother. I held a Rikers rally a couple of years ago and it was a mother of uh, a man who had died in Rikers and she was speaking. And there were really, and I mean like a tear jerking speech. And there were really people in my comments being like, if she was a good mother, her child wouldn't be at Rikers. Mm -hmm. uh, that's their own fault. Oh, don't do crime. People yeah. say that on anything. You could post the most gruesome, horrific story mm -hmm. and they are there blaming the people in this black. I have, I have black people in my comments right now saying things like, oh, we really need to take responsibility for our badass kids. I'm like, and I think that's the, the thing that really strikes me often is the black people I hear say these things the most are the black people most vulnerable to it. Like it's mm -hmm. always the black people themselves right. who are the literally the target demographic for the like the oppression you're trying to battle that they're insisting on. And, and they and they present you by you by trying to like advocate mm -hmm. for them. You know, or for for us, but largely for them, they say you are detached. You're the one that's not speaking to a black reality. Well, that's, I that's think their that, reality. But you, I, you go. I, I think that. I, 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 I think that it comes back to 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 just the the nature of just living in this a uh, such a hyper individualistic society that at the end of the day, I, I think that there's a consciousness that, well, at least that most colored people have that uh that there is some even if they don't want to call it racism you know trademark uh but there is some sort of implicit bias baked into the system but so long as it don't impact me <laughs> i really don't give a damn <laughs> you know what i mean like and going back to what we were saying about classism you know as long as you listen i'll tell you the other day you know i got my car stole <laughs> you know what I mean? In my mind, I'm not thinking about, you know, if I call the police on this nigga, you know, he going to go he going to go to jail, he going to catch a charge. Gonna, I'm thinking about getting my car back. <laughs> you know what I mean? So from the cops, think, they're not going to find your car. <laughs> and, <laughs> in 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 that moment in time, that's what I'm thinking in my head is what do I do? It's call the police and tell them to go get my whip because I gotta get <laughs> home from work, you know, and and that's just that, and we we're just conditioned to think in that to think in that way is how do these systems serve me specifically? You feel me? If I'm a homeowner, I ain't really concerned about you know uh, how this charge is going to impact you know bro ten ten years down the line. I'm concerned about the fact that you know he jacked my TV from out of my house, and that's the way that we frame it. Uh, that's the way that it's framed, and that's the reason why you have so many people. I I think that a lot of people, you know, I, I, somewhat purposefully only look as far as the nose in front of their face. You yeah, know what is, I mean? Is, yeah, which is human. I think that's a human, right? Human, right. Yeah. And, it's, but, but you said something really interesting, Bill, and I would love to hear back from you on it because you said, like, you know, like. You know, the only thing you're, we've been conditioned to do is call the police when something go wrong because they're the presumption of moral superiority, mm -hmm. of justice superiority, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't have that experience because I grew well, up. Well, let, well, look, look, look. I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what I did without telling you what I did okay. is, you know, I got some folks around that way. Mm -hmm. And it got taken care of, right? You right, know right, what right. I mean. Exactly. That's how you got your car back, though. If you had called right. the cops, I, they would come in five hours. But most people they wouldn't give but a Most fuck. people don't think they that way because most people don't grow up in a condition where they're trained, you know, to look to the community for, uh, for a solution. They're trained to look to the system. I just so happen to have grown up in an environment mm -hmm. where we ain't really had that option. You know what I mean? I, I think I, I mean, that's I think really sense. interesting. I just want to make the point that there's two things going on, right? There's a thing of like, I'm only worried about me, so I'm going to call the cops and, and involve the criminal legal system because I'm trying to get mine. And that really does make sense to me. But there's an other thing of like, that is not going to serve even your interests. That is yeah. not how cops function. <laughs> they are not going to be like, calling all officers and find your car, you're much likely to get your cousins or your friends or your whatever to find your car. So that's the part that feels frustrating to me because not only is that harmful, it doesn't, the, the system does not operate in the way that it pretends to. And black people more than anybody know that. So then why are we pretending? Like if we call the cops, they're going to run and get our car back. They're not. Or they're going to get our bike back. Or they're going to get our TV back. They will. That will not 
happen for 99.9% of people and probably 100% of Black people. Because I think police is the only thing in our society that we are, we are quite literally indoctrinated to believe you just, they... Your police are treated like water and air. You know what I mean? Like kids are kids, like little kids. And it's like good, like good, bad. You know what I mean? Cops and robbers. You, you need to know 911. You call the police. That's just treated as, as synonymous. And when you think about it, our whole society, right? Like every year people give, they inflate police budgets and then they say they're not safe. And then they do, they continue to give more money for police. And to everybody that somehow makes sense. Like to be, to be critical of the police or to be against giving the police more money is seen as being anti-public safety because that's so synonymous. It's the only thing that can continue to fail by the admission of the politicians doing it every year and they and everybody's on board with continuing to do that. So I think that's a lot of the reason why people can have their own personal experiences where they know, <laughs> think about the time you called the police or you went to the police for something and did it go like the shows? Did it go like the movies? And they still continue to trust the police. Well, this was the we end were also always wa- raised to not trust the police. I don't know about y'all, but like I was not raised in a household where it was like the police are helpful to us. It was like, when we get pulled over, everybody's shook, everybody's scared, everybody's shaking. So I get, I get the dissonance and like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be obtuse. I'm just trying to be real that like, we actually hold both of those things and extreme distrust of police, extreme skepticism of police, extreme knowing that police are violent toward, but violent towards us, no matter what. And then also like, uh, an ability to kind of hold what society has told us and like operate as though we believe it, even though I just, I really don't think that we do. Well, that's because it's all we have. So, so the idea that my community yeah. is doing for me is to a superior level than the, than the police. I also can't subscribe to, right? Because my environment was hostile. So, so if I'm being honest, you know, the anecdote I wanted to share with both, to share both with Rena and, and Bill is that like, you know, I didn't, I was indoctrinated to have distrust of the as Rena said, like I was indoctrinated to have such a severe distrust of the police that I think the first time I ever called 911 in my life, I was 22, 23 years old and it was at my girl house and I had bought my first luxury vehicle and I was such a nigga, I parked it in the back of her, of her apartment because I thought it's closer to the window, I could see it. You know what I mean? <laughs> right? And I fell asleep and they, and no one even stole the car. They just went through the car because I I think like they like they, they went through the car, they opened the car, they busted the window open, came in, went through all my shit. And I remember... And this is to, to show just how like indoctrinated I was, the opposite of what we're speaking of. I remember I was like, oh shit, they went through my car, babe. Like, what I'm gonna do? She like, she like, oh man, you gotta call the police. I'm like, yeah, what's their number? And she might have said, you gotta call 911. And I think I said, what's their number? And it, it's like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not neurologically divergent. I just, I just <laughs> literally. <laughs> They have been flattened into this um, this symbol or, yeah. uh, or this idea that to her meant safety and to me mm-hmm. meant problems. So why would I call yeah. my problems? You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, shit, they went through my shit. Like, I'm going I'm, to I'm have a better chance trying to call the homies to figure it out than I am calling the police. But then also my insurance paperwork, the system that is in place, requires... Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Like, right, right. She had to yeah. inform me. She educated me. She said, "Well, baby, because I was like, I ain't calling. You know, I ain't calling the legal rules." She's like, "But if you don't call, you can't get yeah. the insurance claim on whatever may have been taken." And I said, "Oh, yeah. well, it's been. It, it's not just that the police are this are this like you know this independent agency that's operating in some capacity that we all bow down to. They've been. They are in. They are intimately intertwined with the mm-hmm. system that at large of our operations is a daily. And to divorce yourself from that is is, is a large thing to do. Because even if I don't fuck with y'all, I'm like, damn, I got I better call so I make sure my jewelry is insured and I can at least write. Yeah. Like, uh-uh-uh. So it's bigger than just I'll fuck with the police, but I got to call the police. It's literally they've made it so that you have to interface with them as a solution before you even have practicals. If you don't want to go to streetway. By the way, um, and there's an innate distrust, and I'm going to pass it over to Imani. There's an innate distrust. If I don't trust the police, well, look, guess who robbed my car? My community robbed my car. The homies robbed my car. So, or the homie sister, or they crackheaded uncle, or some dude who just passed <laughs> through the neighborhood and they didn't clip him. So somebody <laughs> did something to me, right? And if I don't call the police and I take it out on my own, well, the police are going to get involved if I take it out on my own, if, yeah. if it goes that way. So it becomes a kind of like a lose lose situation to be to be completely honest, even for people who haven't been indoctrinated, which doesn't necessarily support 
the argument this brother was making on her page, right? The argument he's making on her page is more so closer to what I think Rena was saying earlier. Of there's there's a uh, if I'm a I'm not like you Negroes. Like I think it's yeah. more of that than anything. Yeah. But Amon, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I think it's interesting because earlier you were saying that you know. I'm not the one who's going to be able to talk to these people because that's y'all's duty. But really, you are the one that's going to be able to talk to people because you're doing the thing that abolitionists want to try. Like you're actually practicing what people are saying needs to be done. You went to the community. You you figured it out, you know. Um, and I think what strikes me about just the whole defunding the police abolition conversation is just the lack of imagination. Right. Like. I don't have all the answers. If someone wants to say, well, what if I get raped? I'm not going to be able to look at that person and say, well, yeah, we're going to have a community meeting about it and blah, blah, blah. But because that's not going to satisfy the person. But what I can say to them is what's going on right now doesn't work. We are putting hundreds, like, you know, tens of billions of dollars into policing and we know it doesn't work for our community. So where's the harm in advocating for shaving off a couple of million and giving it to some actual black people, people who understand how community solutions could work and let them see what they come up with. You know, like it just seems like people don't even want to let, people don't even want to give something new a try. So that was the one thing I wanted to say. And the second thing in terms of being forced to interface with the cops before you can get any sort of justice, like of course being the, being the abortion lady on the conversation, um, it reminded me like if you are raped and there you live in a state where there's a rape exception, to an abortion yeah. ban, you have to go to the police and file charges. And we know yeah. how that goes, right? Like yeah. we know how that goes for white girls. We especially know how that goes for black girls, black women, white women. So I think, yeah, I, I, I really think it's the lack of imagination and the unwillingness to just give some money to some people who know what they're doing and let them see what they come up with. Get a pilot program going somewhere and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think yeah. I think propaganda is so effective in kind of addressing these arguments because if you think about it, if crime if crime goes up, everyone's going to say you need police. But if crime goes down, down? everyone's going to say you need police because the police are working, yeah. right? So yeah. the police have created this type of of, of a bubble where whether they're doing they're not they never really do great at a job, but whether they're, they're feeling miserably or feeling horribly. They are still going to be the solution to the problem. And so what yeah. happens is that because they're always a default solution, because they always have an argument whether crime is up or whether crime is down as to they should get more money, then that means yeah. that there's never a room for a different opportunity or a different approach because the, it, and, and I also I also say this, you know, just talking about for politicians who are politicians are, are, are if there's a, say there's a crime, there's something happening in the subways in the year, great example. Even though that was kind of again, that stuff is 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 hyped up by the press, right? The conservative press mm-hmm. who wants to make a you know wants to to, to create to demonize you know the the black cities where all the animals are running loose and creating all this crime <laughs> and chaos, so that the white people in the suburb are so thankful that you know they get the opportunity to vote Republican. But the the reality is that the solution still is uh, we have to add more law enforcement to the subways right that oh so but but the thing about that is that no one's going to ever say if he adds more law enforcement that he's not trying to do anything to solve the problem yeah and when and when, and when you're a politician that provides cover and that cover is so important because you're just trying to get through to the next election so you can win again, right. right you don't really Correct. you don't really care so so if i if, so if someone says add more police i'd be like well no one's going to say i don't care no one's going to say i'm not trying and you can you can always debate the whether it's the efficacy of the solution, but you're never going to say that I'm not doing anything, and that provides me the cover that I need to wait another two years so that I can go on the ballot, and you forget that this stuff was happening in the first place. Yeah. And my question would be, what do you, what would you, and this is not to be antagonist, this is genuine. Yeah. Um, what would everyone prefer? Because I I feel like I feel I do tend to lean towards. It's funny because I'm being. I didn't think I was going to be there. I'm the gangster on the phone call. I thought I was going to be like, <laughs> fuck the politicians, fuck their systems. But um, you guys are just so eloquent and so articulate and, 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 and so well spaced in where you stand. You know, I'm not. I'm not gonna pretend like I agree with everybody. That's you are. No, no, because I, I don't. I like. Look, do I believe that we should defund the police? Probably. I, but my personal opinion is that I wish we had higher regulation on who were police. Like that's my personal. Like I wish that they were they were more well educated. I think that I wish they were more community oriented. I wish that they were, before they got the check. That's my personal. I wish that we had. 
I wish I'd treat them like the Marines if it was me and not by the actual Marines. The problem with that is, again, it assumes that it's a mistake who the police are and what the police are there to do. Like, it's yeah. not, right? Police are there at specific communities where you see police nonstop. It's ours, right? Yeah. It's the specific people that they abuse and brutalize disproportionately. It's us. It's us who they're incarcerating. They're there to do that to us. It's not a mistake, right? The reason why the police can do this in plain sight is the reason why they don't care about their mm-hmm. body cam footage and all of this is because it's fine. That's what they are there to do. And white people know that. You see how, like, those of us who are public defenders on this call, you know how when you represent on the rare occasion, on the rare occasion you get a white client, they are fucking outraged. <laughs> they cannot <laughs> believe this shit is happening to them. You see it, like, think about just, like, the, the viral, you see when these white women start crying Ooh. and call the police mm-hmm. and say that this is a black man. They understand, but they understand how the police system works. They understand that it's mm-hmm. not supposed to be them, and it's for us. So it's not this. Th- and also, I think something you're, to your own point you made initially um, at the beginning of the conversation about the fact that we have to work much harder when we are in these systems. Like, that's the whole thing about systemic. Why we say policing is systemic, a systemic problem. You'll say that from police. People be like, oh, my Uncle Joe, the police is a good guy. Ain't nobody disputing that. The reality Correct. is there's a Correct. job, right? Like, my yeah. little sister is like a financial manager uh, for a, a school. She be dashing hopes and dreams getting promoted. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. because she has to. That's what it, you know what I mean? To do the best at the, do the best of what the job wants you there to do. So what they want from you is to be policing these communities as hard as possible. They want that. Like think about the amount of police officers that you see get, uh, get uh, commit some kind of brutality, commit some kind of crime and they get promoted. I could think yeah. of several off the top. No, most of, of no, most of them, and, and even in the in the back histories of some of the instances we've seen over just the past decade, most of them have had instances of extreme brutality against people of color. I'm not arguing an endemic issue. I'm not arguing that it's not a system overhaul that needs to take place. I'm saying, for me, at the at the when I talk about defunding of the police, right? It's like my thing is when we talk about commissioners, when we talk about uh, certain political people that that are on committees that dictate the regulations themselves and the agreements we have, that's policy. Like this is multi-pronged. I simply say, if we're talking about who's in my community policing me as a nigga who's been locked up and interfaced with a lot of the ground foot soldiers of the issue, which you will not defeat the entire system fighting foot soldiers, right? Like there's a head somewhere and that's the head you have to deal with. And that's more political of voting and knowing who someone's background is and what policy they participate in. I think that should absolutely happen. That's why I leave it to y'all to handle that. But if I'm talking about for me in my community, what I've noticed on the ground, just the ground stuff, which, you know, is a, is a, a pebble on a beach. I've, I've noticed that the men that, and women who are hired to police the community itself, which is just an enforcement of those regulations and agreements, aren't they not the most capable humans? They right. not, they're right. not the smartest people, even the commissioners that we hire. Even even if you go to the school system, we look at our superintendents. These aren't our best and brightest. Well, I think but, they, but, here, I, but, but here's the gag. But here's the, gag. the system like intentionally gets us to focus on part in order to preserve the whole, right? Like we focus on police as though police are this wild, you know, wild niggas running free and the rest of the, the thing isn't a part of them. The smart people, the smart people who would go be cops, the ones that don't seem like bumbling buffoons are the prosecutors, the legislators and the judges. Right. To the Senate right. and niggas up that are that are fully a part of it. The police are not doing anything mm-hmm. like by themselves. It's one band, one sound. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I th- and I agree, but I think that it should right. be a harder. I think that it should be a harder. Well, I, I think I I, I I understand what you're saying, but I also think, and I mean, it's honestly like this idea that police are there to protect the community to solve crimes is in itself propaganda, because yes. the, that's not their goal. And if you and if you that's why that's why so the the, the you're talking about the current system, no the, correct, I'm sorry. talking about the system that's no, always been always so historic so I'm saying, so like, I'm saying I think that's why when, when when she touched uh, when Imani touched on clearance rates I think that's so mm. important right because let's just like we we you can be a progressive you can have the ideology but let's evaluate them through their value system and purported value system mm-hmm. they say that we're here to protect people and to arrest people and convict people who commit crimes. They're horrible at that. They, they, mm-hmm. like, let's, let's be right. They are horrible at, they, they will arrest, <laughs> I know, like, I've, I've just done this, I'm laughing because I've done so many times. They will, they will, they arrest random people. They arrest people with no evidence. They, they bring horrible cases. They have no idea who does anything. They have, like, they're, <laughs> if their job is to, is to solve crimes, they're horrible at it. And so, mm-hmm. and so you either have to start looking at it and say, okay, is that, is that, are they just that bad at their job and no one cares? Or is that not their job? And 
I would argue yes. that that's not their job. I, I would argue that their job is is to keep you know the community under control, and to keep and keep yeah. to keep to keep yeah. that 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 stuff that happens in your community and like in our communities, or whatever, to make sure that that stays there. Which which is why yeah. I, I, there was a study I was early. It was oh, when I was in was law school, but it was like they they found some of the most stop and frisk happened on a Wall Street in that in that area, right? Because because the issue was. Why is this black person here? Yeah, you know why? Why are you? Why are you in this neighborhood? And we're going to aggressively yeah. come to you and enforce and enforce the law. We're going to aggressively grab you and put you against the wall and start and because you don't belong here. But in your community, yeah. in, in your community, we'll let you do whatever. Like, please, if, if if you generally think police care about black homicide, then I, it's just they just don't. They, they they just don't right. they don't they don't care and they, and and they'll put they'll put the same innocent person in jail for twenty five years and they'll let the person who who did five murders is, look I'll talk to you just in talk value of some of these federal plea deals in terms of you know people kill ten people and get and get it you know the 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 they 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 also let a lot of predators not just sexual predators but you know violent predators back on the streets and they could care less. Of course, we can they are the things. sexual predators. No, I, and the I, agree, violent predators. I agree. I agree. But you know, they, yeah. uh, but can I just really quickly say because I think that I really do think the point about clearance rates is like a very good point to make for like talking about the purpose of police. But I also get really nervous about that because all clearance means is conviction. So it's yeah. like sometimes people really want to push cops to have higher clearance rates, and like we don't actually as a society have any mechanism to do oversight of the police. Like we can ratchet them up, we can give them more money, we can hire more of them, we can force them to do convictions, we can ratchet them down, which is what like defund the police is about. But we're not we have no way to be like you need to do better quality detective work. <laughs> you need to be kinder to the people in the community. So a lot of times when the clearance rates are high, they're just wrongfully and falsely convicting hella people. So I, that's just something I always feel like I want say when we're talking about clearance rates because i'm not going to be like well cops are doing a good job but they have a 90 percent clearance rate because yeah. i know that that usually means there's a bunch of 15 year old black kids who didn't do anything other than be in the right wrong place at the wrong time on rikers or in in right. these local jails but malcolm what i really want to say is to your thing your first thing of like what's the alternative because to me that's like the whole point of abolition and that's the point that like is is hit less hard and less often we legit know what advances public safety. Like it really is not uh, a mystery or a surprise. So I can give you like some examples. Like for example, summer youth in, in New York is like this uh, program that Mayor Adams loves to pull money from that gives like teenagers jobs in the summer. Mm -hmm. Kids who are involved in that have like a 25% lower arrest rate and even higher than that lower arrest rate of felony arrest because they have jobs, they have something to do, they have money. When uh, Obamacare passed and expanded Medicaid throughout the country, that reduced uh, arrests in the South by like 30 percent. And people think it's because people had access to like behavioral health, mental health care affordably for the first time, giving folks supportive housing. They did that in Denver about 10 years ago that. Uh, for people who are like repeat offenders, people who have like a lot of justice system contact that reduce their rearrest rate by a third. So it's like people don't believe it, but like there's hella data and hella studies that show if you make investments in community, if you cut poverty, if you give people jobs, yeah. if you give them access to health care, if you give them access to housing, that is like a cheaper than funding the police and a more quickly better tested public safety um, intervention that like reduces crime, reduces violence, and increases public safety. To my point and Ole's point, like that's not really what cops are for. So when we're pushing more cops, the people that are pushing more cops know that. Like maybe yeah. every American doesn't, but like the people who are policy experts know that. And there's a reason why they're pushing police and stealing money from those programs to make police seem more necessary because they're serving a different purpose. So right. so the thing I think I find frustrating, right, is that 
I know that white people know that. I know that because I have I went to school, high school in West Virginia, only black girl in my class, I went to college in Ohio. I've been surrounded by white people and I've seen white people engage in a million things that would be crimes or criminalized if it if it had been us. And never once is that the response they come up with when they were drinking this, da 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 da. They always pulling deals, fill, figuring something out, you know, blah, blah, blah. They will never, they don't, they don't resort to the criminal system. They know, oh, send this one to rehab, do this, 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 and that. Yeah. Thing. So they understand that. The part that I find confusing is why black people act like they don't know. Like the fact that black people themselves are responding to the concept of defund the police or giving more resources to the th- to things like like with the, all this bewilderment blows me because I'm like crime is not divorced from anything or and even if you thought it was let's say you think crime is by itself and there's no root causes and all these other things aren't related you still at the very least in these communities know that these other things are issues you know you have issues with housing you know you have yeah. issues with, with your education system you know you have issues with health care you know this so mm-hmm. why are you mm-hmm. so proposed they defund that every year that is a mm-hmm. normalcy that every year they're taking money from that so why is that perfectly normal or that's not a problem you want to talk about to Correct. say the resources why is that so crazy to you when we say, hey, instead of the only thing that gets addressed for black people, and that's how you know they're not addressing a black people issue. Mm-hmm. They're addressing white America's issue with black people and how to deal with black which people. Is how to, which is why is it only crime? The after the problem has gone awry, after the root issues have been ignored. I completely agree with holistic approaches and funding being alternative, not even alternatively, but redirected to the proper sources or with people. But I, I, I think that that's where it gets... That's where I agree with with the issue. It's like if we got teams and they fighting over funding, right? And these guys are really good <laughs> at getting what they what they need and what they want to militarize and pension pension uh, pillow and all that shit that they doing. Um, I wonder how we can get our team to win more. That's that I, I would like my team to win more. I, I like think a big part of it is. More. I think a big part of it is is you know how we say all skin folk ain't kin folk. And that's and that's part of the thing that I think that they, I think that's the bush that we kind of, you know, trying to skirt around. Mm-hmm. And the reality of it is, is that it's a lot more conservatively minded Negroes. than I think that we're willing to acknowledge, mm-hmm. you know, what I mean, yeah. like just because you vote Democrat, that don't make you liberal. It don't make you progressive. Like if you ask the average. If you ask the average person, you know, what, how they really feel, you know, about wealth distribution, how do you really feel, you know, about having your taxes bumped up just a little bit so that which I mean, if we really want to get into the weeds of you don't even got to do that. But if you ask them, you know, what if we just bumped your taxes up just a little bit, you know, and everybody have health care, everybody have someone oh. Nigga, what you talking now, about? Now, what you talking about? This I don't is making so it, it what that how much we paying in taxes is where they putting the taxes. I bet you that's what I'm about to say. That's what I was about to say. They settling this conduct settlement. I know O can't do this because she, you know, she 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 super left gang member. I am newly rich. I'm a newly rich newly rich Negro, and I feel like there should have been a bill passed to protect me for two years so I can get my footing. Two years. Because because the idea, right, because I really, that hood tax is real. Like, my community tax is real, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Every dollar I get, first and foremost, I pay for, I don't know, how many funeral services, how much health care, how many um, bail money. Oh, knows how many how much bail I done paid my first year of making any kind of money. So, by the way, because I wanted to put the money towards the causes that I believed in and the things that I believe mm-hmm. help my community and deviate some of this criminality that occurs, right? Because I know where it comes from. I'm from there. I know that if you put my home, if you put my, my little homie's little brother in a science program after school, he's not going to be on a block. And if he is mm-hmm. on a block, they're going to be doing what they learn in that science program. Like, right. I know that. So I helped my one. I, like, that's what I did. Now, this is the problem. Um, if you ask me, you want to bump my taxes? I have no problem with it. I'm chilling. I come from the community. I'm with it. Let's redistribute. But when they redline whose money gets money where, depending on where you live, and so the white neighborhood, you, you I don't like that I live in a rich neighborhood now, and that them little white kids get my money. I don't like it. I don't like it. They don't need it. So I take my money and I give it to my community. Um, I don't like how they mismanage my money. I don't like what they do with my money. I don't agree with how they police my community. I don't agree with what they do with even the roads being neglected, but somehow my kids ain't got no books that are, the books are 10 years old. It don't make no sense. So, so 
What so do I we don't do? like what they do with my tax money. That's so what do we I do hate. about That's the amount of black politicians that we have doing all these things that we hate? And they're then they have strongholds of black people who feel like hashtag black excellence. Don't mm. say nothing about them. Why are you attacking? Like I have all kind of black people in my comments. Like, why are you trying to humiliate and bring down this black man? This black man. I'm like, this black man is anti-black. Like I'm being referring referring to the mm. and then to Rena's point earlier when y'all were talking about um conviction or uh, clearance rates. Um, and, and Rena said that that makes her uncomfortable when she hears that because she knows that there are a bunch of bl- uh, black children being locked up and accused of things. It makes me think of the D.C. crime bill with Muriel Bowser just the other day, making it so they could decide any area is a high crime area. And then they, the police are free to stop, frisk, question any uh, any black people in groups of two or more. So what do we think like this? Is, and these are black people doing this. And when I put out I put out an op ed for Essence explaining like, yo, these black men, we have a conundrum of these black politicians that are it, like they not only are they anti-black, but they have to be staunchly more. So like there's a reason why Cop City is happening in Atlanta, mm-hmm. why this this place that wants to present itself as a black Mecca feels compelled to go out of way to even over police to show we really got it under control. There's all these black people mm-hmm. there. So we even have extra more policing. And yet when you point that out to black people, it's black people telling you yeah. you are trying to bring down black people. Because remember what I said, and I'm, and I'm, I know I'm holding this particular part hostage because I called, oh, when baby girl, I ain't going to get on her because they already on her bumper. But I called, oh, I was like, it's not that she, because she's presenting it as, you know, this law and order thing, right? She's like, mm-hmm. you know, we have to preserve law and order for the good blacks. And I'm yeah. just sitting here like, listen, mama, if you truly felt that way, if you truly felt that way, there wouldn't be joy in your voice at the convictions that are going to be rolling down from this massive RICO for people that you know really didn't have nothing to do with whatever it is you're trying to actually convict, trying to get some notches on a belt. So even in the the lack of empathy in your voice, the sadness that you should have is that, damn, the system failed these kids and now they're involved in something that I unfortunately, due to my job, have to prosecute. But I need to do something and I'm failing. Like, yeah. this is a failure that we even have to do this. That's yeah. not the perspective she took on that thing. Yeah, the perspective she took was, we got to keep all the other Honey. other other good of law abiding Negroes safe. And I went, see, the bitch is a liar. She's a yeah, fucking but, liar. But where you don't care about niggas? She yeah, don't care. Fuck her. Also, <laughs> also, where that's cap is like the the black cop mayors, like they yeah. are not catering to black people and they are not listening to black people they right, are correct. doing this for white people like they yeah. it's easy for them because they're black to be like i'm doing this for the black community but it's like i work in politics like that is not who they're selling this to they're no. selling it to like the white establishment the white yeah. democratic establishment and the whole thing about like cops not creating public safety you know where you don't see any fucking cops in white neighborhoods. That's- if cops kept you safe, would they not be lined up the block in Beverly Hills and Bel Air? You don't see them. Even when like there's huge publicized burglaries or, or crimes, they do not put cops on the block because people do not want that. They do not need that. And they recognize the things that keep them safe are their money, are their safe schools. Yeah. And sending cops Ooh. to the black community to keep their boot on all of our necks at all times so we can't even go over there. So it's like, I just don't like this idea mm-hmm. that these like Eric Adamses are like, I'm sticking up for black communities. Because I'm like, I've been in the rooms that you're in and that's not who you're talking to. And that's not who you're catering mm-hmm. to. You are selling the dream to white people and white Democrats that like mm-hmm. the city is so scary. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. We're going to keep all these black people in yeah. check and we're going to throw them all in right yep. so that your neighborhoods are safe. Yeah, well, that, that's it. That's the thing right there is, is, is that's how you keep your job. That's how you stay in office. Oh, you see your nice little lily white gated community, right? You know why it's that way, right? Because we're keeping all the niggas out. You know how right. we keep the niggas out? You give more money to the police and they'll make sure the niggas stay where they belong and away from y'all. So at the end of the day, and, and I think at the end of the day, you know, you got to come back to the historical aspect about it. Policing was never about us. Police, or let me correct that. Policing was about keeping us in a state of slavery, essentially. Yeah, slave even slaves. if it wasn't, slave even if it wasn't by name, that's what it was for. Even in the North, it was always about protecting rich people's property from the poor folk, the colored folk, the immigrants, and everything in between. So if the foundation is rotted, 
the building is going to crump. The building is going to be rotted. If you don't do nothing to address the foundation, that's just what it is. And so that's where we are now. Nobody ever addressed the fact that all the cops in the South was all Klansmen. Nobody ever did anything to address that. So now they just carried on them same tactics, that same mentality, that same philosophy. And again, you got a lot of you got a lot of pick me blacks that we just going to keep it a buck. They well, fine the with that because I could live with the white folks. You know what I mean? So. But the irony is that the bloodline, the, the the actual blood work for for policing, right? Even if you start with slave slave patrolling, and then if you go to property protection, whether it was in England or whatever, like they would cherry pick those people. They would pay them because the rich would pay for the people right. from the mm-hmm. community. So it's yep. actually very much so a part of the system. It's, it's a part of these the. the the makeup of the entire system is to grab people from your people to and give them a little bit of something to make them participate. And and I think that what what but what do you do? You like what? How do you how do you convince somebody when you give them a little something and elevate their status in this community mm-hmm. like, to to look back and go, no, I'm not going to help you protect your property, whether it, or or to sequester my people. I'm not going to do that and get voted in office. Well, we have to participate and make our vote count, right? What Ola does such a good job of doing. I don't know if you released really, that doc, the doc that you did that I saw before it came out. Did you yeah. Put out? yeah. Yeah. We need to come that that's that like, cause I was, you know, I'm a non-believer in voting because I was a criminal for a long time and I couldn't, now I can. Um, <laughs> And so she really inspired me because I was like, yo, I was so, you know, we they, they win with apathy with us, right? They build apathy within us, like it calcifies. I don't even want to participate. This is stupid. Like, what are we doing? Um, but I think that the the if they can get our people to come and 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 uh, uh, how you do coon against us, in, in lack mm-hmm. of a better terminology, well, then we have to be able to mobilize forces to put our dollars, our votes behind the people who are actually going to get in there and have a history of policies that are for us. But we can't do that if we don't want to participate. Yeah. And I know I was a hardhead who did not want to participate for the longest. And if it wasn't for, oh, you know, really having the the um, patience with me, right? To, to, to inspire me to participate and vote. And well, I mean, I was always a local election guy, but the bigger elections that I thought don't matter. Um, you know, I was always a local election guy. But you know, if without that, I wouldn't feel like I couldn't see the correlation. I couldn't see the correlation. But once you start drawing very clear lines for people, like mm-hmm. these is ABC, the way that these cops market is very ABC. Hey, look, we got all the police in the nigga areas. And they stay over there and they go to jail. And like it's very like a through line that's very clear. Yeah. I think that with liberals, we get caught up in these like these non sequitur arguments that like veer off. And <laughs> it's like yeah. the marketing is terrible. Like we need to study Disney or something, because this is crazy. Like I, I think it makes me think difficult. of a thing Masai and I have had this conversation a lot. Um with like we talk about the fact in the, in the legal system, a lot of it's like, yes, it's black people. The, the, it's disproportionately black people in the criminal system, but it's also it's poor black people in specific. Yes. Like, let's begin yes. with black people there. It's not every black person's experience. Right. Um, and the thing about that is it's like you have all these different people, these different demographics in the court, like even the kind of black people that are there that do not right. relate to these lived experiences that are that are judging this in, in 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 a way or assessing how you respond to life circumstances that that we cannot relate to, right? Right. And but then here's the flip side of that. The the black people that have experienced that or live in those communities will then who you would think is the only outlet to truly have some understanding and to be sympathetic. Y'all mm-hmm. be the main ones, Malcolm. <laughs> like, I, mean, like, I, I, I think that's interesting. Like, I think that's interesting because I, 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 I wasn't I wasn't born in those things. So like but being but if you're gonna say you're liberal and progressive, like like Olay, a lot of dudes that I, I know from the hood are gonna be the ones who are gonna be adamantly, like aggressively arguing <laughs> against your positions, right? So I, I and, and I and I and I was like so at a certain point you know and this is I guess for anybody you're like you're like I'm I'm a little confused about what, what's going on here but I but I do think that just have thinking about it it's like okay it's just people's lived experience right I think for for me it's like I associated I um I I could see have when you have certain things you can and, you, and other people don't have those you understand how people act because they don't have it. And I'm talking about basic things. Yeah. I'm talking about you. You're not worried about food on the table, right? I, I never, I never had to worry. You're not worried about 
where you're going to sleep or home or environment or anything like that, right? You don't you don't have to worry about any type of you know uh, violence happening to you, like uh, like just obviously freak accidents can happen, but you don't have to generally worry about mm-hmm. violence. That's not something that you have to particularly worry about, right? So mm-hmm. you you and, and then so someone who doesn't have to worry, and then you see you see people what these people people have to go through, and you're like okay. Like you understand what's going on here. I mean, it's a completely different dynamic, right? Like you don't, and but then, but because I think when you grow up in that environment, you think you normalize it, and you start to think like, yeah. okay, this is what everyone goes through. It's like, no, bro, everyone's not going through that. You don't like you you Correct. don't you don't understand that like you you like what what people around you are going through is not is not right. What what people are being right. deprived of of they're not like you should have a place to sleep every night. You shouldn't have to worry about you know, paying rent, right? Or, you know, doing all these type of things in order to have a place to live. You shouldn't have to worry about food, right? You shouldn't have, you should, you should, you should have to, you should be able to go to a public school and get an education, get a decent education that can get you a good job. You should, you shouldn't have to, you yeah, shouldn't it's, have to. It's, it's by design that you no, I, understand, I, I agree, right. but it's also that the day, no, I'm agreeing. The day, but yeah. they'll look at it and like, this is just normal. Like, that's not normal. That like, you have to understand that people are taking away what, what you're entitled to, which is why I'm a, I'm a big like human rights person in terms of like looking yeah. at human rights in terms of like, what are we as a human being entitled to? We're entitled to food. We're entitled to shelter. We're entitled to education. We're entitled to like a, a certain standard of living. We're all entitled to it because we're mm-hmm. all human beings. And it's that, that dynamic that I think that maybe that can bridge that, that gap and start to say, like, look, man, if, if you if everyone in the community had these things, the community would be real different, right? I mean, like, you got like, it, would, it would be different, right? right? If, if, if every, and, and especially when you're also when you're older, because when you're older, when you're a kid, you may not know about the economic, but economic problems, but you know that, you know, maybe, maybe your mom was yelling at you because she's worried about the rent. And she's stressed, yeah, she's stressed, yeah. she's stressed about, she got an eviction notice. And, and and she's stressed, and now and now you're getting you're getting all this flack, and you think it's because she's just being mean or whatever. You don't understand that she's trying to figure out where are we going to live in seven days. There's yeah. a gag. I mean, I, I want. Think- I also want. I think we're all saying this, but I feel like it makes sense. We need it. It's helpful to say it out loud, mm-hmm. which is like also we, obviously there's a lot of people that are like squarely impacted by this that are on some bullshit, and most of them live in. Ole's comment section, like that's where that's their address. But <laughs> I also think it's important to remember that, like, a lot of this, like, radical um, ideology came from that exact same community. Like, it was yes. poor black folks mm-hmm. who were very much at the crux of this that, like, thought of a lot of the concepts that led to abolition. People like Johnny Tillman, who did who did labor organizing. So it's like, there is a class element to the way that it manifests now. But I do believe that like some of the best, most radical um, thinking did not come from the upper yeah. class Black people. You're right. Who had, like, some, the elegant, you're right. But the elegant the thing is definitely did because you need the tools to implement it through a system. Let, 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 now, let now, me push now, back, now. though, because I think there was all, like, a lot of a lot of people that you're talking about, like, it used to be you could come from, you know, humble backgrounds and you could get that education, right? I mean, the education system, it was it was never great, but even my, my dad's time, we, it was... I, very fancy education not to brag what what did these people teach me other than how to indoctrinate me to hold up their injustice they weren't teaching me critical thinking to undermine the system no, no, that no, i'm not talking about that i'm just talking about this terms of presentation that's all i'm talking about like because that's important that's yeah. important when, when you get when you get into these spaces it's important that you know people you, you know like what you, what you learn going to fancy schools is how to talk to people who go to fancy schools but they don't that's 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 the value in and of itself because when you're in the yes. you're in the space and all the fancy school people are talking all the no, bullshit. It definitely it's does. like you're like, it, oh, it I can talk some bullshit too. Let's talk some bullshit. You know, it what I'm afforded saying? me like, tons it, it afforded me tons of privileges. But to your point of like back in the day, people could get a decent education. I just don't think that our like educational system, even when it's like good and elite gives you the skills to be able to be critical of the system. So I don't yeah, think you need a good education to be like a radical thinker. And I think oftentimes having those good educations 
actually indoctrinate you further to be like the pick me type yeah. of people about the culture and to like education. reproduce the yeah. logic of the oppressor because that's what they're teaching. I, I, those yeah. But you're talking about the culture of the education, not the merit of the, so of the I think, individual arithmetic. So I think it, it's, it's a cyclical problem, right? Because I think to what my... I, I think everybody's different points I'm about to bring in because to what Masai was saying earlier is that what happens often is when you are raised in these communities and you're having this experience, it becomes it becomes normalized to you. And so that's a lot of what you're seeing from the back people that are pushing back against these things that you think are in their best interest. So at that same time, that's why it makes sense for people like Malcolm to what Imani and Reina were saying is like you say, it's supposed to be us pontificated or trying to into uh, um uh, educate people, but it's actually you because what happens is those people, then those people in those communities, either ha they have two choices, right? It becomes, they don't want to hear their experiences parroted back by us who mm -hmm. are people who, who don't experience that. So they don't want to hear it from you. Right. But mm -hmm. then the flip side to that is what happens. Why so many, even though yes, the school of thoughts and abolitionist thoughts and a lot of these things to organize and on the ground, a lot of this theory comes from the people themselves who are actually in these communities, but here's the gag. It's a privilege to be able in order to be able to go, go to school, go pontificate, go get the jobs and have the luxury and stuff to be able to do these things without a certain element of danger because of what class protects and stuff like that. The people like the people who actually grow up in those communities, even when they do understand and they are the ones, the organizers, they're in the forefront of that. They're the ones who are the quickest to get criminalized. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're the quickest ones to end up in the system, the quickest ones to lose something. Like there's a certain, I'm not, nothing, I can put this out. We can have this entire conversation and I can put this out with my colorful backgrounds and Olay and friends and put this out mm -hmm. on Sunday and everything is fine and I can keep doing that. But if somebody who doesn't have the name or the background or the fancy degrees or whatever and that's mm -hmm. that in the community goes and says that right now at a community meeting, the NYPD mm -hmm. is, is regularly going to be watching them. You know what I mean? Yeah, Trying to look anything. And look, you you know, we had that conversation the other day because Kanye's crazy, but he's half crazy. Like, you know, but I told you when he was in the car, like he was like, Well, I ain't killed nobody, so they can't do shit to me. And, it, and, it's, and it's hilarious. It's so hilarious. It was so hilarious. I mean, look, mental health is not hilarious, but I said that when they started taking a particular interest in you because of how you verbally assaulted their leader, um, I was like, Well, it's well, it's up for them because they're gonna have to fabricate some shit. Yeah. You know, they're gonna have to literally come up with something because you are clear and free <laughs> of any real issues at this point. And um, someone like me or someone like my homies or the people I'm connected to, it's very easy to take out a mouthpiece that someone, because none of us are dirt, none of us come out clean from where I'm from. You just don't come out clean. It just don't happen. And the ones of us that do come out clean is because they were preserved by a system or they were a token of tokenism, right? So they don't have like, you, you got to do something. You got, there's a, there's a Maslow hierarchy of need. And you know, if you are not allowed to, 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 to go attain those things in a legal, formal mm -hmm. fashion, not even illegal, but just a formal fashion, you're yeah. going to get something on you and they're going to weaponize that against you the moment that you try to tr try to railroad them. Cause then, then on that moral high horse thing. So for me, it's always like, I preserve my little homies the best that I can. I try to provide in com in the community alternatives, the holistic programs that I've literally started and funded and continue to do because it seems like the only hope. And um, I do yeah, believe yeah. that redirecting those resources to where they need to be will be the eventual um, corrosion of this system, right? It's the idea that like, no, the systems are getting, like my community is getting better. Us individuals who do happen to make it not abandoning our community. And I don't mean just living in the same zip code, but being participants in the uplifting of that right. community itself. Uh, politically, right? Uh, legal, legislatively, uh, in, in whatever capacity, but we do, it, it is tough. It is heavy. I've watched you do all this good work and be like, Malcolm, I can't even make as much money as I should be able to make to survive in the way that I should be able to survive because I've chosen this path. And that's how they beat us. They win every yeah. time, you know, because we, because you got to literally be a miracle. Rena got to be a miracle. Masai got to be a miracle. You might got to be a miracle. Lil Bill got to be a miracle. Literally. And that's what you told, you advised me was my point of view when I went to Cambridge to speak. Right. Which was, I was like, what's, what is my contribution to a discussion? Because I don't just want to sit around talking about shit with no real solutions, no efficacy to these things, right? Yeah. And he was like, well, your perspective is academia has no real, very, very seldom has a real life applicable, you know, situation. They, and, and and my very existence is, 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 is not a symbol of how this system works. My very existence is, oh, just to land a plane and then go ahead and do it is you you said this, so I'm going to quote you. He's like, my very existence is the problem, right? Like the idea that I had to be magical to survive. Yeah. 
was, was is it is not a show not to show that the system works it's the reason the system doesn't work and um mm-hmm. that's been my crusade since having that conversation with you please go ahead I, I think that just reminded me of of the other thing. The other flip side to this is there the side is very the formal aspect of where a lot of not only do a lot of the black people who are most experienced in this, the people who who live this are boxed out in a bunch of different ways from being the actual people that are leading these things, even though they should be and should be speaking to these things. There's also an element of this is the the, the nonprofit industrial complex, this world that does this work in a formal way is very white. It's yeah. white as fuck. It's white as fuck. <laughs> so that's also a thing. And they don't want to hear from, they don't want to hear from those people. Very often they like to pick like black avatars, black people that they do like. They pick the those of us that they, you know what I mean? And right. Symbol, yeah, symbolically can represent. Because it, it, like, it, it, mm-hmm. it sheds light on how much they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> like if there's someone in the room that really has like lived experience or actually knows what they're talking about, it shows kind of that so many of the white people in this space that are experts are not experts in anything other than like enjoying to hear themselves talk. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. not, well, not even the, not even the way I've, I've been on campaigns where I've had, you know, uh, quote unquote fly in the milks. And I'm like, I'm from, I'm not from here literally, but I'm from this. I know what's going to work. You know, I've had proposals that have been shot down because, oh, we don't have the infrastructure. We don't have like, what you mean? We don't have an infrastructure to put a shoe box in a barbershop and just tell them, you know, to just drop something in the box. Like, what you talking about? But yeah. because, you know, because I'm not a part of that cabal, right? Because I had to be magical, because I had to be one of those exceptional few. I was one of those, had one of the, the, uh, the, the hashtag gifted child that the community came around and said, we're going to get this nigga out of here by crook or by crook. We're going to get him out of here. And I was just one of the few that came back and said, well, I ain't going to leave y'all hanging. But yeah. Then when I got into the room, the very people that supposedly supposed to be, you know, the messiahs, you know, the great white hopes or whatever, they don't want to listen to what I got to say because it's not really in their interest. Their interest is to do whatever. And it was a good point you brought up about the I, I once I got involved in nonprofit, I realized that it really ain't it, the only difference between nonprofit in the corporate world is that the stakeholders are not stockholders it's the feds so we just want to do whatever we got to do to put on a good show for the feds we couldn't care less about and so that's what turned me off to that so then that made me take on the mentality of i literally have to do it myself you know what i mean i literally have to crowdfund myself to do it and to make it happen and to make it work because and i think that that's part of the issue that uh, a, a lot of people who do come from that environment feel like is that just if just enough of us can get out then we'll be good hey, but, but, that I ain't it. but i want to reverse that word because that get out once again that's part of the problem to get it right out. that's that's you know the thing saying? it's, like it's not we, getting out it's, it's just getting state? a hold of the resources <laughs> right. and bringing the resources bring back, back so that we don't got to get out. We can just make it happen right where we at. But what, but but then, okay, but to, to that, and I'm Masai, you talk, because I feel like you're going to say the thing. Yeah. There is also an element of the Black people that do do that instead of leaving. I think of the young dolls. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and they... Yeah. And they get killed or something happens to them and people have the attitude, well, what the fuck did you, were you doing staying there? Right, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, mm-hmm. well, it's only the niggas, was, sorry, I'm sorry, go ahead. But it's, it's, we, it's only we, the niggas, it's the only niggas that stay, if you notice, we all have a similar pedigree. The only dudes who decide to stay in the trenches that they came from after accruing resource, said resource, all of us are what? Ex-criminals. Right. People who've had high stakes situations where death does not scare us. Right. Like that's the only type of dudes that you ever see come back and stand in the center of the neighborhood and try to build something. And then, of course, we're proving, you know, we get clipped. Um, that's just how it goes. Um, but well, go I, ahead, Masai. I'm just saying. Know, I, I was going to say, like, we, we so the, the one thing that I that, you know, so maybe I, I do have a problem with, like, is that, you know, black people don't. And I know money's tight, but black people don't financially support these black institutions that are in the community mm-hmm. that are trying to do yeah. to to do good. And there are a lot of them. There's so many, so many brothers and sisters out here 
who are are, yeah. are trying their best and trying to to do it. And what people don't understand is that you still you still got to pay bills. Like just because you believe mm-hmm. in and you want to work for a better society doesn't mean you don't have rent. Doesn't mean you don't need health insurance. Doesn't mean you don't have a car note. And so if we want people who do these jobs are willing to take less, but no one's going to do this job if they can't survive. And what, and what we as a community, yeah. we got to understand is that we have to financially, if you have the ability, I, look, I understand it's time to stop, right? I know, I know, I know it's it's time. There's so many people, like, I, I understand, right? Because, you know, I deal with it, but I, but I'm saying if you're able to, if you're capable, you, you, right. we, you have to be one of the people who are, who are reaching out and helping out these local nonprofit communities that are nonprofits that are ran by the people in the community, ran by people who come from the community, the people who fund. And I think we kind of know, like, you know, we're talking about the white people who fund nonprofits are not funding black led nonprofit, black women led nonprofits. They're not no. funding a nonprofit led by someone who comes from the ghetto. They're not, they're not funding a nonprofit or someone who comes from the hood. The, 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 you said what? Who they funding? Yeah. So there's a lot of nonprofits. I mean, you know, uh, they, they, they're not, they, some of these nonprofits, like the nonprofit my dad's chairman of the, the board for, like, you know, you have a $30 million annually, annual budget, right? That's like, that's considered a mid sized mm-hmm. nonprofit. Some of these nonprofits have $100 million, $120 million annual operating budget. I mean, they are getting heavy donations. Right. And they're taking that $100 million every year and they're doing whatever programs or whatever they're doing with that. That's going to be funded by usually, you know, it's going to be white executives, white, you know, corporate people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people who come in who donate, whatever. And so we, if, if we want our institutions to have that same impact to have those programs, we have to provide people the opportunity to do this for a living and to do it for a living. You, you gotta, you have to pay bills. I mean, it's just, so that's the only thing that I push back because not not you guys obviously, but it's like some people be at the like, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, why you need to get paid? What do you mean why you need to get paid? Like what? <laughs> so so now I, you know, what, what, what am I supposed to do? Like that's the infrastructure that little Bill yeah, was talking. Yeah, about. the real yeah. infrastructure is, is being able to provide for people like oh, Rena, you, Bill, mm-hmm. to to do the work to be able to yeah. not be because that's why we end up. Um, cherry picked by the system itself, right? Because it's survival. And, and, and I keep having some some black guys who shut up. It, it's they're broke. People people won't tell you. I, look, let's let, like at some point we gotta have a real conversation. That you know, because everyone after like everyone got money. Some people some people broke, and and, and, and it's, I, it's, a, it's a tough call. I, look, I, I that's why as I get older, like I understand. I don't I don't agree with it, but I understand it because. You know, mm-hmm. you, so many people try to do the progressive. They try to do the good things, and they and they're and they're broke. They got no money. You know, they can't pay their rent. They can't pay their bills. They're struggling. Huge credit card debt. You know, you know, can't pay electricity. And it's like, oh, oh, you seem to have some skills. I'll pay you, uh, you know, eight hundred thousand dollars. Like, I like like a hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars to to go to go you know make, tell this banker that he needs more money from the federal government. You know? uh. Coming, Listen, coming out I, of left, I, I left yeah. campaigning to drive a forklift for four yeah. years because <laughs> it wasn't paying me. <laughs> yeah. So it's real. Yeah. It's real. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is why I think that's why it's like hard to talk about any of this stuff without talking about anti-capitalism and capitalism, because it's like Mm -hmm. so much of the so much and going to your point, Bill, about like a hyper individualist and individualistic culture. So much of like why the people who have the most capacity to kind of reimagine this world and fix these problems haven't been able to do so is because they're busy working like 16 jobs to try to survive. That's why I brought up hashtag Black Excellence because that is Black people's belief. Black people are very invested in capitalism and this idea that like, We'll be successful if more of us just be in the positions that they're in. Exactly. If more of us acquire wealth, if more of us are business owners, if more of us, are, of us is this. So, like innately, that's what I'm. I think is like the fundamental underpinning, like the problem to everything. Right? Is like when you try and challenge Black people or Black authority or the Black representatives that we do have that are very much so like aggressively holding up the status quo or over policing us or taking resources from us. It's Black people who believe in this like Black excellence in this. You know what I mean? Even though they're the ones 
most situated not to be able to achieve it because of these systemic issues What's that this don't black want to hear that. Thing I want to be educated on that too. This this kind of buzzword. It's just like the I like is yeah. That, I mean, well, the, it really lets me know. Hold on, but this is what lets me know that we're different kind of Negroes. This when like Malcolm was in like a big insecure fan, and, and, and I knew and I knew what he was question. because the why fact that like Malcolm's like hmm, I don't be hearing that all the time. What's that about? Meanwhile, every black person that I know in law school, black excellence, black excellence. It's, it's, it's hashtagged on every grad black graduation picture there is. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the idea yeah. that like in, individual black achievement is is a, it, 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 like black black achieving at a significant high degree is a solution to the problems facing the black community. So, no, I so, think look, I think it goes hand in hand with so, representation yeah. matters. Oh, right, 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 right. right. Which is I, hate I, I hate that yeah. too. Yeah. And by the way, look, I like symbols too. I like pictures and shapes as well. But we, we you know, are like you all like symbols. symbols. I mean, like it, it like mm-hmm. you you, you yeah. feel good, but it's like it's not really doing anything. But you feel good about it. Like it makes yeah. you like if you get pr- you're proud, right? You're proud to see it. Like you know, you 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 someone like you is 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 there. Maybe not like you per se, right. but like you know, close, <laughs> like like close. Close enough. Enough. We, we, yeah, like, what is we got the same saying, skin close, tone. You know, like, no, hold on now. I think the people furthest away from black excellence mm-hmm. don't understand because they don't they're the furthest away from it. They don't see how ineffective it really is in application to recognize it and won't say this at all. Uh-huh. And those closest to it are benefiting from it personally and recognize how difficult it is to actually do anything for the rest of black people and they abort the mission too. Well, and I'm then everyone's like because when you think about it, to the same I'm a third because I because you know I'm a storyteller. So I realize the importance of stories and symbols. They're they're very important to marketing. They're extremely important to marketing. I do not think that they're important to problem solving, right? They're just like they just they give you a, a good little sheen on a car, but they're not gonna get you there, right? So for my thing is like I ain't got no problem with symbology and shit. I do think that there's a problem when symbology overtakes actual solution because then that then it becomes not effective. But, but it but it always has, right? That's like what Derek Bell talked about that um in in Faces at the Bottom of the Well. That or Derek Bell. I, I, and, and by the way, that you know I, you know I'll be mad at these symbolic niggas too. I'm simply saying you know you know there's a reason that that it works so well in marketing, and and yeah. I think that if if like. You know me, I hate symbolic niggas. That's part of my, even in my own profession, I get mad at the people who look shiny and look like they got something going on and speak for blackness and whatever is convenient, but then never around when it's really going down. You know what I mean? Like I really, I listen, I, I, my ire is expressed to, oh, offline all the time. <laughs> um, but I wouldn't do away with all of them. Ah, I keep them. I just don't want them in control of shit. So, like, like, I don't want them running anything. You're the mascot. We but need they do, put but, balls but, they, but they do, but that's <laughs> right. the thing, but they do, because, because while you might recognize it as a symbol, the mm-hmm. things that are recognized as symbols, the people that are clinging to them do not see them as symbols. They see them as substantive things that really matter. Like there, there are a lot of black people, mm-hmm. shit, m- most of black people who felt like, you know, Obama being president, it means so much, so You're much, you know what I mean? Saturday, I know that. We're not, <laughs> we're not, we're not touching, we're not we're touching, not touching gonna, Obama. Yeah. <laughs> Because oh, I know, I know. Habit. Now you you get in trouble. No, that's oh, what I was going to say. Like, so Obama people think I that talking. is. I'm sorry, I stopped talking with Obama. I, 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 I'll talk about Obama. I will have. Don't to do it, Rena. No, Rena. No, you too. I'll be quiet. We can use you as a symbol. Don't do it. I got too many aunties and uncles. Listen, that I need my, to be wary of. I'm going to keep my, I learned my lesson the, the hard way. <laughs> hey, look, hey, look, I'm going to be real with you. I'm I'm pretending like I'm scary on this phone call because I'm the first, I'm a guest. But in real life, it's fuck all that bullshit, to be completely honest. Like drone strikes, <laughs> all the bullshit, not fixing actual shit, not having a, a, a policies that are really meant for us. Like, don't get me started. And but- like, I don't even be mad at Obama. I'm not mad at Obama or anything. I just, I, and I don't think anybody, and I'm not saying that I think people should be. I just think it's, it's the difference between not being mad at somebody, but also thinking somebody, somebody's personal success or an achievement or something that might be symbolic and be great. I, I think black people are allowed yeah. to appreciate that, receive the moment and, and hold the Obamas and whatever esteem they yeah. want. But it's the yeah. mistake of thinking it means shit for the rest of us. But it's ego reflection. Like we have the, the like people thirst yeah. for hope. It's it, it, and, and the symbol gives yeah. them that because it makes them see themselves and, and people, in that position. People kind of hopeless too. I mean, it's, it's, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Sometimes, sometimes you just, it's like it's just negativity, 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 and you just want something positive, and you know it's like okay, I know, I know all these things, but for right now, I just want to see, you know, like they just want to see a, a nice family, 
you know, nice, you know, respectable black family in the White House that's just, you know, you know, doing their thing and representing the country great. You know, that, that, <laughs> I like I don't I don't really care what politics <laughs> they do. I that's that's all I care about. And I don't think any of us yeah, are we of are. it, right? We because like for the criticism that we have for like black excellence, like there's black girl magic. We love that black boy joy and all of those things. They have their meaning. They do have their like, mm-hmm. there is something legitimate to like black man posting black man, being excited, being in a community, having friends and posting black boy joy. Like that is something that has meaningful, I think meaningful um, um, results. So I don't think all these things are meaningless. I think it's just about when I think black excellence in, partic- in particular is harmful. Like, it, like I think what? I can find can a lot I- more. I think everything, everything in moderation, my baby. Everything in, everything Can I touch on the, the flip side of black I, 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 I think to me the problem, it's a, it's a theory of change that I disagree mm-hmm. with, right? That like dates back through black liberation from jump, which is like mm-hmm. they used to call uplift, which was the idea right. that like if we prove to white people that we're not savages, mm-hmm. yeah. then we will get equality. So it's like, it's yeah. that's your theory of change. That's fine. I have not found that to be true. And so I think black excellence is great. It's great to be like, oh yeah, these black people are doing dope shit. Like Ole was saying, or black boy mm-hmm. joy. I think when it's a, when it becomes a problem for me is mm-hmm. when it veers into like the solution is continually yeah. trying to um, uplift a certain type of respectable black person and, yeah. and say that that A is all black people and B, if we can prove that that's all black people, then we're going to be free. Cause I just don't believe well, that. Well, as a budding cis symbol myself, right. Um, you know, my complaints to O are often very much so that deep, right? Because even who we choose to be our black stars, to be our black representatives in sports, mm-hmm. media, whatever, communications, which is the largest, right, expression of, of the pamphlet for what, what should be the problem. Um, we end up getting these very safe Negroes. And, you know, it, it, it goes down to even casting. It goes down to even even like who's chosen to be in the role from the, from the dribble. And she knows mm-hmm. I've been in here trying. She knows I'm, I'm, I'm kick everything over kind of nigga. So. She she spends a lot of time telling me, Malcolm, shut up and get that get get in there, right? Because the hope is that someone who gets blessed with the magical designation of coronation of of Negro that is that is allowed in these spaces, your whole jug is to vote is supposed to be. I hate to use black, but the the, the spook is set by the doorstep. You're supposed to be siphoning from these from these people and from these systems to bring back to the real niggas mm-hmm. to properly organize and distribute. And, and accelerate. Um, and I think that I really, it, you can't do that when everybody don't read, when everybody think they, they just glad to be in a position. They want to keep on, hold on to the position. Don't want to be educated because how magical of a moment, truly magical, how excellent would it have been for Eric to listen to, O, right. To, for the mayor to listen to O and be like, damn, actually I might've been fucking up out here in these streets. What can we actually, what do you see? Uh, what kind of initiatives can we implement in my small little time left in this motherfucker that can hopefully revise some of the bullshit that I've been on, right? That would have been magical to me. That would have been excellent to me. Um, but them Negroes just want to hold the fucking baton for as long as they can. And I, 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 you're right. I do agree with you that that's some bullshit. Um, we just got to stop buying their shit and voting for them and going to their movies well, and watching their sports. I, think, and I just but, agree with that. But we also okay. celebrate people who exploit the whole, their, own, their, own, their, own, their own community, right? And, 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 so, and so our heroes, a lot of our heroes in the community are people who have gotten to where they are because they've, you know, um, exploited other members of their same community. And so, and so, yeah, and so yeah, we, yeah. so we're looking at it in terms of when we see people, when they're talking about this capitalism, it's a capitalism built on, and I'm not, I think all capitalism too, you can make an argument that all capitalism is to a certain extent this, but I think there is a difference between like, you're just a mom and pop small business owner, which technically is capitalism, mm-hmm. but you're just, you're, you're just, you know, selling a product and you're doing something versus I'm yes, going to make my money by, you know, m- by exploiting you and by making sure like I'm going to, I'm going to do real estate and I'm going to have, make sure you're in a slum and I'm going to, and I'm going to use yeah. the laws against you and I'm going to keep going, keep getting new people in the apartment at, and I'm not going to make any repairs. I'm not going to make any renovations and I'm going to have you, you know, suffering inside there. And then if you complain, I'm going to kick you out and I'll bring somebody else in. And I, and I did that all over the place. And guess what? I'm a, I'm a huge millionaire and everyone's like, Oh, yeah. this guy, we, I want to be like him. And it's like, well, if, if you're like him, like people like him are the people that are 
you're actively doing things that are hurting and destroying the community. And so, and so and that's the thing. We're, we're celebrating the figures that are doing the things we're allegedly need to yeah, dismantle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so, so it becomes more difficult because if your hero is a person and, and you know, like Diddy was the same way, I mean, Diddy, Diddy's not going to get canceled for exploiting black artists for 30 years. Right. You know, he's right. not going to get, he, he, even though, I mean, yeah. he's economically exploited so many people. Right. And, and again, he does deserve to be canceled for what, for what he's done. I'm not saying he hasn't, but I'm saying that the fact that he, that everyone knows that he's been screwed over so many artists and that's just public knowledge and nobody cares. You know what I mean? Like, like, right. and, and so he's still a hero in the community, even though every, all right. the artists, all the people who work with him, I said, he screwed me over. He screwed me over. He screwed me over. He screwed me over. You hear because we don't see that as it's not bad. bad. Because it's, it's, not it, bad. It, it's perfectly acceptable to black people to exchange black people in favor of like mon- monetary yeah. gain or success. Because yeah. again, using black excellence is like that's what we we it's like normalizing the innate investment we have in capitalism is that we think it's okay and it's right what we these billionaires and these people do to get there. That's what you gotta do. That's what it is, and it's just us trying to do it. And so we excuse that. We have and it shows how much like it shows a lack of a lack of uh belief in our own worth the fact that we're okay with that like that that was all right the fact to messiah's point it's like that was okay that diddy was this and we all knew this and we all knew this and we never no one the community never decided it was a problem like we're gonna rise up against them but now that these things happen well we have a low bar for our deities you know and that's just that's, that's the real that's the right low bar we have a low bar for our deities because but once again it goes back to maslow's maslow's hierarchy of needs because it's just so difficult to just get anything and get anywhere. Mm-hmm. We celebrate the moment anybody got it. And the thing is, the people ain't going to change. They like that. So my my question is always, well, how do we compete? Because Master P was doing right by everybody at first. At first. I don't know what the new shit is because, you know, apparently him and Jess be arguing. But I know that fundamentally, nine times out of ten, you know, he was heralded for doing, doing right P. by everybody. Master P wasn't doing right by everybody. What, Master what P mean? first started, first of all, it was Master P's wife. Her family had the record, had a record store and they had the connections and she started it. She's the one who started up No Limit. She was originally rapping. I thought his music. granddad died. No, nope. it money. It was his, his wife. It was his wife. His wife and his family gave the capital to start all that shit. And Master P been dragging out. They've been having like Can a tangent of this on give up. Put him on. You want me to verify yes, that? I, I, I will link, a, I don't I will know, link the RRG video. You ain't taking the video. I will link the video in the description box. I will link the video in the description box. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But, I'm telling but you. But is it verified? I yes. Yes. They took Diddy. You got that cereal. They just dropped that cereal. It was stupid. You heard about that? Yes. See, see, this is the problem. We can't have nobody. See, this is what the problem is. I got, you, you took Dick. Yeah, okay, fuck Dick. Yeah, take him. But Master, we can't have about it, about it? We because, can't have... But you know what it is? There's a lot of... Listen, we, it's not that we can't have anything. It's that the Black people that really be for Black people, that really care about the state you of know. Black people in community, we think they're annoying. We sick of... Mm-hmm. We, we make them into jokes, you know, tap this, mm-hmm. da, 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 every big we, we embrace anti-intellectualism. We want them to shut the fuck up. We say they're making everything too serious. Why everything got to be that deep, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So it's not that we can't have anything. It's yeah. that we don't so want... So be better with your marketing. <laughs> Look at be better with your marketing. No, but like I, but I, but I, be better with your I, 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 I agree. I agree with them one hundred percent. I agree. I agree. No, I agree one hundred percent in terms of like, like if you think about what the right does, they got they got these think tanks. They have these like they will like they will they will practice these terms and these phrases and they will put them in front of an audience and they say how does this perform and they'll get another audience how does this perform we. And I, and I say it in a good way because like we're, we're genuine, we're sincere, we're about like honest expression, and so. We're not trying right. to like, we're not trying to sell people on something. We're just going to be honestly say what it is. But the reality is that this is America and that, you know, you got, you got to know how to package the ideas in a way that's going to be more efficient and trying to get them across. And that's my favorite. Who does that work because, oh, you do it with your, with your, with your YouTube. I was going to say yeah. to somebody who's like more explicitly in that work in general, it, mm-hmm. we do try to message and we do it there. It, it isn't that there does, that doesn't exist on the left on that side of the spectrum of people trying to message and package and be more mm-hmm. like intentional where I'm really like, this is a stronger way to talk about this versus this. The difference is on the, on the other side, 
it's easy for them to be united on one band, one sound, one message because they don't have a genuine, they don't care about the stuff. It's like white supremacy yeah. and whatever the general, you know, they can all rally around that and they know they're not bought in. What happens on our side is like one, not only is there a massive difference of opinion, you know what I mean, across the board, but mm-hmm. the people in charge of who, when the, the messaging gets out, isn't me. It's the white liberals mm-hmm. and the white leftists yeah. who hold the money. And again, they pick some avatars, but if the avatars are dependent on their money and their mm-hmm. job and their income and all this stuff for, for our stability, we don't always get to choose the winning message. Like even sometimes, yeah. like a lot of times I, I, I help support movements and local organizers and stuff like this all around the country. And people will make their entire campaigns, like they do their entire organizing or whatever advocacy mm-hmm. thing that they're doing for however long no one calls yeah. me i don't hear shit about it i don't know nothing about it they really? decide that they know what is a good message even though yeah. they are not the messengers they don't have the vehicle to get the message out they have no proof that they can message well but they will come to you the actual messenger at the ninth hour to try to get you to to repair it, their message rather than let you message it you know what i mean and so and then yeah. they're shocked that their shit isn't successful in one day of a shitty ass message that nobody who actually is able to do that co-sign so yeah, you know and you know a I big love- part of it is that the the white folks on the left uh don't want to the different a big part of the reason why there's such a big difference is that the white folks on the left don't want to be real about the fact that they part of the problem the white yeah. folks on the right, they don't got to worry about they, they that care because the black folks know that they're racist. They just don't care. They're just saying, let me get some crumbs from the table. They, they don't, they don't want to hear all of that. They, you know, they just want to hear, you know, Marx and Hegel and all that other garbage. They don't want to hear, you know, a nigga tell them about nigga issues and say, y'all is the problem. They don't want to hear that. They just think, oh, well, because I'm listening, you understand? Yeah. They just want to be patted on the back, you know, for just giving you the space. But they don't really want to, you know, take and absorb the message because then that forces them to have to, you know, deal with some demons that they got going on internally. Again, the folks on the right, they don't got to worry about that because they, because, you know, they tokens have already said, you know, oh, uh, boss, you ain't got to worry, you know, I'll, you know, they don't got to worry about that. Over here, we ain't playing that you know right. what i mean either okay. you're going to be down for real or i ain't getting down with you at all and they don't want to hear that they just want to hear you know thank you thank you for giving me a platform and that ain't good enough that yeah, ain't the, it the the uh the centrifugal force of collective conservatism is far stronger than what y'all well, got well, yeah well wow. you know what it is there's, 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 like, there's, there's no you, you can't you can't sell out on the right the question is like everyone on the right is a sellout. Like it's just the question is how much and what's the number. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I guess they sold it. Depending, depending on like whether you need the money or not, you sold it or sold out. But I guess the question is like everyone's for sale. Like they 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 they're open about it. Right. They are open about. Oh, you want me to push yeah. this right wing mm-hmm. stuff? You know what's 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 Crowder getting? Like thirty. I mean, like the number the numbers they're getting on the right is insane. It does make you. It does make so you quite, like that. Like these guys have no talent. They have no ability, and they're just they're just out here making thirty million dollars a year, just spouting nonsense every day on YouTube, and and, and it's crazy. Yep. And so, so so it's like the amount of money that they're getting, and they'll be open about it. like I'm not going to spread anything until you come up with that twenty million dollar check, you know. But if if you're yeah, a leftist yeah. and you say that, people are going to be like, and I I, I actually agree with that principle because I don't think you should be demanding a twenty million dollar check. But the point is that on the left, you know, there's <laughs> Well, I mean, who's because who's paying you? Who's paying you the check? No, no, who's it for? No, I don't. I don't <laughs> that's the problem. I don't give a fuck how big the check is. Where's it going? Is well, it I do, I do think not? we, we got to be is honest that there's the no, pool? there's no work. Like you got to be paid a reasonable value for what you do. You know, you're only going to be paid that type of money. No, you don't. Well, uh, marketing. Work. I understand, but you're only going to be paid that type of money if you're if you're, if you're trying to go over on people. No one's going to pay you thirty million dollars to tell people the truth. I mean, you got you got you got to be good at like you had a lot of people to get thirty million dollars. And even if they did, even if they did, black people would then distrust them because when black people mm-hmm. like when black people are like messengers or they do this work or they do good work or they do this kind of advocacy or all this or whatever, if they're successful at it, if they're successful at it, and that comes with any kind of notoriety or money or opportunity immediately black people have this energy and people in general but we're talking about black people in our community this energy that is like it's no longer sincere or genuine you should be doing this for free you should be yep. struggling it's this idea yeah. that like your genuineness is wait, wait, associated wait, wait, oh, with struggle. About, oh, thinking about the nonprofit, yeah. how 
God for you know, like yeah. you out here saying like, oh, I'm I need my bills paid. They're like, oh well, this, you're this is you're, you're doing the work. You shouldn't have to worry about money. Why are you talking about money? You should be doing the work. Well, they use that dirty word capitalism in that moment. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. When you like, you're not, when they don't want to pay you money, when you when you you're have to bills to pay, you're a capitalist, right? When I was like, I gotta. <laughs> I, I'm not talking about trying to get rich over here. I'm just saying that, like, I I got bills and I'm trying. You know, I'm trying to do the work, and I I can't do both. I can I can go do something else and get some money, or I can do the work. But uh, you know, if you, if you want this to work, then you know you need to come up with some cash. And I and, and I hate to say that, like, it sounds so bad when you say it, especially on the left. But I'm like, bro, you can't. You look. This this is real life. This is real life. You have yeah, to be able to yeah. Revolution. People don't understand. Like, Coming out of law school, I like, and I was in a better position in Messiah. Messiah became a public defender before, years before me. And, mm-hmm. but when I came out of law school, the, the salary that I had before you get admitted to the bar, my salary was $53,000, I think 53 or $54,000 as a public mm-hmm. defender. And, and my rent, so my paycheck would be $1,500 and my rent is $1,300 in New York yeah. City. Yeah. As an attorney, as somebody who done gone through undergrad, law school, took the bar, passed the bar, and you're in the most expensive place, you have two hundred dollars after you pay your rent. Mm-hmm. Like you can't even what the fuck? That's not even that's not even cover your monthly metro pass. Like so, and you get an incremental like that's what it caught. Like that's what you make when you decide you want to do things like directly in service, and that's what people don't get. Like it's very easy for people to shit on those that need to make money. You know what I mean? Or or try to make money through through it or become successful or pivot. But it's like, what are you gonna do? Because at the end of the day, it it'll put it puts you in the same place. In the same way we originally said the black people who are most live these experiences cannot afford to be the ones do we taking these jobs and stuff. Like you said, it's the tax of trying to help your community, yeah. trying to get out mm-hmm. and all the other different bills and burdens. And also being poor structurally keeps you out of it. Cause like, even as somebody who like my parents, my, like, I'm not somebody I would say, I come from a deal, a very upper middle class in the Bahamas life experience. And still like just to get admitted to the bar, they were on my head about what bill I owed and what collections. And I had to clear all these things up. So what happens to the person who is in much more debt than me, much more collections that their mom was in, their daddy was in, all these things become things you have to explain before they even have you admitted. So then you end up in the same position as like the original group of people who were boxed mm-hmm. out of it, because now you're working a job that you cannot pay you to live and survive to do it. And then that impacts you. And that also impacts your representation and the kind of advocacy you can do for black people. Because like, there's so only, it's only so much you can do for, for if you're trying to advocate for the community and you and the community are like a half off in terms of your living circumstances. You know what I mean? It's like, you're while I'm trying to help my yourself, clients, I'm just like, as broke as my like, 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 you're not, I mean, like, exactly. you know, like, I'm broke too. Like, I, like, like, like none, of us, none of us got any money. Like, is there any way we can do something to get some bills passed so we can start? So we can start improving people's lives because like yeah. like I'm right there with them. You know what I'm saying? I, I was I was I was in the hood when I when I first started as, as a DD. That's where I lived at. I, I would see my clients on the way to work. It was, you know, yep. it was over. <laughs> I, I was in the basement for years. In the living in a basement well, that, apartment for that, years. That that still brings me to, you know, um the vetting process for who we choose as our leaders, as our speakers, as our advocates who we put in position, where the money goes, where it's distributed. I genuinely believe that structure is needed for our movement. And I and I genuinely believe that better discernment is needed for who's going to lead it. And an agreement. But discernment is determined on what you believe in. And if the community believes in all the tenants that are oppressing them, like even if you, it's like with the standard, right? Like, the standard with which they're choosing people. You see what I'm saying? Like they're exercising the discernment they have. It's not like they're not making the choices that they think make sense to them. And what, but it's based on what they value is a reason why it's not going to be some, some organizer or af- activist or civil rights attorney or public defender or whoever that the community celebrates, but they are going to go celebrate whatever the fuck rapper that's really rich. You know but, what but I mean? That's, like, but that's why I think the mark, that's why I think that public, um, public consent. Are they even really rich bad. though? But that's a, that's you know, a, that's a think, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, that's a whole, that's a whole different <laughs> conversation. Cause <laughs> no, I think, no, I think it's, I think it's the same. I think, listen, you know, we have to be able to understand that, that, that public consent can be manufactured. Oh yeah. yeah I wish well. I wish you. And, and I think, as well. I think this conversations are important though, because I think like, we don't, we have to like form it. We have to like get our, get our stuff together and then kind of branch that out to the community and, and, and kind of just like, but we don't even talk to each other because I, I understand everyone's kind of like trying to do their thing and trying to survive. And, and so like, we don't really take the time a lot of times. It's like, hey man, like, and also we, we know that that's, that that's important and necessary too. Cause I think 
whenever you when you do do the work and you're and you're in the, involved in this type of stuff, it's it's a lot. It's stressful. I mean, the, the leg gets way more way worse, way worse than anything that I that I experience. You know, what I mean, just just be be dang your viewpoint in front of a hundred thousand people. You know, and, you know, and and Americans are not. I look like that's amazing. I appreciate her. She's so valuable to the movement. And, and God bless her. But we also got to support yeah. that because a lot of people don't understand that. Like me, like I, I do. I do. I want to, to to have to get that type of blowback. Personally, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm like, no, I'm, 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 I'll just do my job. Like it's so. So I, you appreciate people who do it, be, but you also got to be honest with yourself. Like yo, like it's a lot. It's a lot to put up with. So you you provide that support and, yeah. and you provide that um assistance because you understand that people are kind of like taking the brunt. Of these attacks, uh, and, and some of these attacks are just absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> but that's why we appreciate platforms like this, and, and because of people like her and like y'all coming don't, together. Don't, don't and, yourself, and sure. to you know, you, you, you do some good out here. You yeah. know. I just make videos on YouTube. I, don't, hey, I mean, hey, I just ra- make videos and raise and raise a couple of so, dollars every right. now and then. I, hey, listen. I, 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 hey, listen. I, Hey, I'm listen, the black man, sheep. Them YouTube niggas making a B over there soon. So I, look, I'm just saying, y'all, y'all the new, you know what I'm saying? Like y'all the new, the new crop. Y'all the new, the new voices and the new vision. And I and, and I and I we spent a lot of time critiquing, but I do want to spend just as much time celebrating even the young ladies that 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 have that have had to go, Imani and and yeah. Rena, just like all of y'all really are, this is the work. This is a part of the work. I know sometimes people are like, oh, y'all just talking in a vacuum of ideas that y'all already believe. Like, no, because I've I've left here with a broader understanding of certain things. I've got to, you know, get on my little soapbox and be like, I yeah. think we need to market better. We need better marketing. I'm tired of this. Y'all got to get just as good as Ice Spice. This is tired of this. You know? <laughs> You know, and, and because that's I, I don't hear that's my addition to the conversation and being and being as a budding symbols as all of us are budding symbols because what media deemed as a focal point for people's attention is changing every day whether it's YouTube TikTok you know whatever anybody can end up at the front of the line now then in the, it, then it is important that we are seasoned with these viewpoints their stances what they mean why they mean what they mean so that when a, a nigga like me get asked to yeah. speak somewhere right. I can go in there, and even if we don't agree, there's a general point <laughs> that we understand that we need to stay on, which is, hey, listen, this shit ain't working. It need to change. Specifically, point A, point B, point C. Mm-hmm. How do I go? There's someone far more educated than me to tell me, and she knows. But also, doing. also that it's not an attack, her. right? I mean, the 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 goal, the, all right. our goal is to like materially improve the condition of our community. Like we just want people's lives to be Correct. better. So. If, if 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 like what right. we're doing isn't working, it's not because you're not gonna fight. It's because we all have to try throw some darts at the wall, and, and we all gotta try to hit yeah. before we can hit that bullseye. Like we have to, we all gotta try it. And I think sometimes, look, it's like anything. E- you know, ego gets involved. But what I will say, like, I think even on the YouTube, just watch it. It's just it's too much. Like, you know, someone name dropping this, and someone that someone said that, and someone said this, and so. And, and, and like I don't, I think substantive critiques are important. That's not what I, you know what I'm saying. But gossiping doesn't help anybody. You know, like, not, not, like again, not, yeah. I don't know, bro. I don't know, bro. That marketing, that marketing. You see, you fucking <laughs> up. That marketing. Well, if you, if you, you try to get views, if you try to get views, yeah, it's a good way to get views. I'm just saying, like, in terms of like, you you try to move and progressive forward. Like, say, substantive critique is important. And it, 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 introspection is important, but just being like, you know, you know, like, look, oh, this person ain't shit. You know, look at that. They ain't, you know, like. You're right. I I, I don't agree, but 50 Cent. But, but, but would all 50 Cent is and doing is making like, 50 Cent more for... money. I was saying, like, I mean, I'd be like, if I... I look, no, no, no. I'm saying, no, no. I'm saying, no, no. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about the money. Oh, oh yeah, right, 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 right. Look at all I am. Look at what O did to 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 the to the mayor. That's oh, you talk about that. Yeah, no, I did to the mayor. I, yeah, that. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. agree with that. Yeah, that's, I agree. That's, 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 but I don't consider that gossip yeah. though, because I, that, that's a that's a you know intellectual interview. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's only controversial because no one else does it. It's not, but it should be controversial because all you're doing is asking your elected official, and holding them accountable for what they're not <laughs> doing to the community for the community. So substantive controversy, yeah. we can agree, is yeah, a good yeah. too. Co- correct. <laughs> Okay. Right. 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 Right.